Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. If you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment. Also, if you want to, if you can, please leave a comment of a topic that you want me to cover. And also too, please leave a comment if you don't like the video. So many videos that we see, we have the thumbs up, and then we also have the thumbs down, and nobody really understands why there's a thumbs down, unless they leave a comment, so I always appreciate it. Okay, I had a question emailed to me from a viewer. Thank you very much. I appreciate I appreciate all support. I, I appreciate all the questions that come in and to ensure that you guys are watching what I'm posting. So I always appreciate that. But the question the question was in regards to estrogen metabolism because she heard about the good, the bad, the ugly metabolism of estrogen and what can she do about it? Because she's on the verge of PCOS. She has insulin resistance. She has a little bit too much high testosterone, not enough estrogen, and she's really confused on what's the deal, what is the deal with the breakdown of estrogens in the body. In regards to males, we have it too. When it comes to the hormones, we all produce the same amount of hormones because we are all, believe it or not, females in our, mo in our, in our mothers until about week nine. Week nine, that's when the X chromosome kicks in, so the males could be XY chromosome and the females could be double X chromosome. Okay, so when it comes to the hormones, we all have the same hormones, it's just the distribution that differs. In males, I always say it's the 80-20 rule. We have 80% testosterone, 20% estrogen. In females, you have 80% estrogen and progesterone and 20% testosterone. It's just the distribution that is different. Now, when it comes to estrogen, okay? So remember, when it comes to all the hormones, all the hormones are made through cholesterol. So we need cholesterol for our hormonal production and then function as well. So when it comes to estrogen, it's made from cholesterol. It is broken down through the aerobic metabolism. That means with oxygen. It balances out good and bad cholesterol in both males and females. In addition, for females, it helps with the mood. It helps balance out the mood because it's involved with serotonin and dopamine. In addition, it affects the libido, both males and females. In males, if we have too much estrogen, it's going to actually decrease our libido because the libido comes from the testosterone. In addition to females, your libido comes with the desire which is testosterone, which allows you to enjoy lovemaking, and also to estrogen, which makes you feel like you want it. It's produced for females, it's produced in the adrenal glands, fat tissue, and during the menstrual years, those childbearing years, a lot of it's produced in the ovaries. In the males, it's produced in our adrenal glands as well as the testes. In, our, in one of my previous videos, what happens is if a male could go from testosterone to estrogen through the enzyme aromatase if he has too much sugar because insulin will will cause that to happen so when it comes to the different types of, of estrogen this could be very complicated if you're unsure of which type is what there's three different types of estrogens so you will have the type I'm just trying to make it very very simple and not too complicated so e1 estrone 1 e1 now this is a very weak estrogen and it's, it's mostly produced in the body fat and it's most dominant in the females, the postmenopausal females. Estradiol, E2, estradiol 2, E2, this is the most potent. This is very active. This is the one that's active and also too measured most common in the females who are going through those reproductive years. So from the onset of your menstrual cycle all the way to menopause. So it's made in the ovaries, predominantly it's made in the ovaries. It binds very strongly to estrogen receptors. In addition, it's the main estrogen involved, like I said, in the menstrual cycle. E2 is the one that's measured mostly. It's most biologically active. And in males, what happens, this is the byproduct of, of testosterone. Testosterone aromatase E2. So you have estriol E3, estri E3. Now this is involved, this is the estrogen that's involved with pregnancy. So it's secreted by the placenta and now E2 can be converted to E3 through the liver pathway. And remember, so when the estrogen is produced, 
from the ovaries, the adrenal glands, or the fat cells, it's traveled in the blood on a protein carrier, and it goes through the liver pathway. And I'm gonna talk about this in another video. It goes through different phases, phase one and phase two, which the estrogen, okay, goes through the liver pathway and it splits into different forms of metabolites, okay? The estrogen metabolites. So the good news is, is good news and bad news. So E3 could be as a waste product of estrogen metabolism. So this could either be good or bad, okay? I'm not necessarily pointing at a bad thing or it can't be a good thing. So it's a mixture of good and bad, it depending on how you're trying to balance out your estrogen levels. Estrogen for females is like testosterone to males. It elevates your mood. It's healthy for fat metabolism. It's also good for metabolism as well. It's healthy for the heart's heart and circulation and improves the memory. It improves a female's memory. In addition, in the long term, the long term, healthy metabolism, metabolism of estrogen lowers the risk of breast and uterine cancer. And I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. So when I talk about metabolites, remember it goes through the liver pathway and it splits to different liver metabolites, which is like a, a byproduct of the big egg, I always say. So you have good, bad, and you have neutral metabolites. So you have the bad, which actually is located in the fat, because remember, where is it produced? Fat. So the more fat adipose tissue that the female has, the more estrogen is being produced. So this is where it's very, very essential to balance out the estrogen. You need to increase the muscle tone. You increase the muscle tone because you want to throw that off. The good, the good metabolites, it's located in different areas. I'll get to that in a second. And then we have this neutral, the neutral metabolites, which is not good, it's not bad, and those are predominantly located in the adrenal glands because postmenopause females, your hormones, the ovaries shut down, and where you're making the estrogen in the adrenal glands. So we have different types. We have good and we have bad. We have a middle one, but I'll get to that in another video. So I want to keep this one general. So remember, so the estrogen is splits off, okay, through liver pathway. And we have this good estrogen. It's called 2-hydroxysterone. 2-hydroxysterone. And basically this is the good. This is the good estrogen. It acts as an antioxidant. It helps with fat loss. It helps with muscle building, mood, less fatigue. And the good thing about it, it's an estrogen antagonist. Now, why is that good for an estrogen antagonist? Because what happens now you have the bad estrogen, the 16 hydroxyesterone. The function of estrogen is to replicate cells. Remember, remember when your females are going through their menstrual cycle, what happens in 28 days? It starts off with the menstrual cycle, the fluffing off of the uterine lining. Then estrogen is needed to do what? To replicate, to produce the cells, produce cells. And then what happens? Ovulation occurs. And then progesterone, progestation, is there to mature the lining. So what happens? Again, estrogen is good and bad. So what you want you want less of that cell replication. So this is why 2-hydroxyesterone is good because it's an estrogen antagonist. The bad one is 16-hydroxyesterone. This is a tumor initiator. This is the one that could cause breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, anything that has to deal with cancer because why? Estrogen replicates cells. And cancer loves estrogen, and this is the bad. This is an estrogen agonist. So this will cause bad stuff to happen. Now, I'm not gonna go in detail about how to take care of your liver, but I do wanna throw this in here just to complete this video. So I always talk about liver health. Liver health is very, very important. Liver is a filter of the system. It's involved with a lot of mechanisms. So you wanna take care of your liver. Of course, diet. Diet, diet, diet. Wheat, gluten, dairy, sugar, soy. Those are all estrogen uh, producers. But you want to take care of liver health, B vitamins. I did a previous video on DIM. DIM is phenomenal to clean up the liver pathway. Antioxidant rich foods, you want fiber. Fiber is good to clean out the system. Selenium, cruciferous vegetables. This is your broccoli. This is your uh, cauliflower. This is your Brussels sprouts. Vitamin D, vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids, zinc, and probiotics are all good for liver health. I always tell 
all my patients, males and females, take care of your liver because that's where it starts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.